Hello lovelies, welcome to our channel Universal Movies. Today I am going to explain the 2018 rom-com film called, I'm Not an Easy Man. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Damien is a shameless chauvinist, who works for a male-dominated marketing agency. He proudly uses all the benefits of living in a patriarchal world to his advantage. He likes dominating women he meets and treats them like objects for his pleasure. Damien's boss Marco loves him and always gives him the important projects and assignments. He has a close friend and neighbor named Christoph Lamy who is a famous writer. One day, during Chris's new book's launch, Damien meets his new attractive assistant Alexandra. He is dating a woman named Sybil but that doesn't stop him from flirting with other women. He hits on Alexandra but she finds his chauvinist attitude off-putting and turns him down. When Chris's pregnant wife Lolo arrives with their two children, Damien and Sybil ask her if they can come over for dinner to celebrate Chris's book launch. However, Lolo is in a bad mood and she turns them down, saying she can't have guests over on a school night. Damien and Chris quickly realize that Lolo is upset because Chris forgot her birthday again. After Lolo leaves with the children, the two friends go out to buy flowers for her. Like his typical self, Damien makes passes at random girls on the street. While whistling at a girl, Damien gets distracted and hits his head on an electric pole, knocking himself unconscious. When he opens his eyes, he finds a female medic tending to him. After collecting himself, Damien meets Sybil and Lolo, who are going out together. The latter asks Chris to take care of the children before departing. On the way back home, Damien complains about feeling cold and says he feels that his jeans are too tight. Chris speculates it could be because of his sagging balls and suggests that he should get a cosmetic procedure to fix it. Damien laughs off the suggestion, thinking it's a joke, but little does he know that Chris is dead serious. Back at his apartment, Damien puts on a warm muffler and a packet of cold peas on his head. He watches TV to entertain himself, but for some reason he sees that every show on TV is objectifying men instead of women. The next morning, Damien wakes up and proceeds to get ready for work but to his astonishment, he only finds short and bright colored clothes in his closet. He puts on a gray sweatpant, tight white t-shirt and heads to work. At work, he notices that most of the employees are now women, who make inappropriate comments about his body and appearance. Damien's co-worker Sophie takes him to her office and tells him that the company didn't choose his project. She calls his humor delicate and tells him that the clients want more feminine and crude humor therefore a female employee got the gig. Damien is surprised and asks to speak with Marcus. However, when Marco arrives, Damien is stunned to see him serving coffee. Damien flips out and tells Sophie that she is making a big mistake by not selecting his project. Enraged, Sophie tells him to calm his hormones before firing him. Puzzled and confused, Damien goes to a bar where he notices two men wearing veils. He freaks out and runs to his parents' eatery. There he sees his mom mincing the meat as his dad entertains the customers. Upon seeing Damien, his father starts bothering him about settling down while his mother comes to his defense. The world seems to have turned upside down. Freaked out, Damien goes back to the electric pole from earlier in the movie and bangs his head on it, hoping to teleport back to the old world but without success. That night, he meets Sybil for drinks. At the bar, Sybil orders a beer instead of champagne, and scantily clad men entertain the patrons but Damien seems to have started to wrap his head around this new world. Sybil then goes to Damien's apartment to have intercourse but she is put off by his hairy chest and storms out. Damien shares his work dilemma with Chris and Lolo who advises him to seek the help of a masculist group that fights discrimination against men at work. Lolo suddenly goes into labor and she is rushed to a hospital, where she gives birth to a baby while hanging by a bar. Chris's boss, who is revealed to be Alexandra, isn't happy that he is taking paternity leave. However, Chris promises her to find someone to take his place, and an out-of-work Damien jumps at the opportunity. Before sending Damien to work for Alex, Chris gives Damien a makeover. He cuts his hair, threads his eyebrows, and shaves his armpits, chest hair, and also the hair down below. A booty shorts wearing Damien then goes to work for Alex, who is a dominant seductress and successful writer. 
Alex lives in a fancy house and she seems to be fond of collecting marbles. When she sees Damien, she notes that he is tall and makes him make coffee for her. She then gives him a list of things to do before heading out. Damien meets her housekeeper Martel who showers praise on her and says only women can write good novels, which offends Damien. After doing menial jobs all day, Damien gets fed up and when Alex returns, he tells her that he is not cut for this job and world. When he tells her that he can't live in a world where women dictate what he does, Alex tells him to save his masculist rant for someone else. For comfort, he calls Sybil to have intercourse but only for her to leave him disappointed when she finishes before making him climax. Fed up with the matriarchal world, Damien and Chris join a masculist group called Tit for Tat. The group is known for wearing fake boobs and organizing protests against matriarchy. Meanwhile, it strikes Alex that a masculist character for her new book could be revolutionary, and she starts writing her book using Damien as an inspiration. Damien receives a text message from Alex and decides to meet her after his father keeps pressuring him to settle down. At the bar, Alex tells him that the world he keeps talking about is interesting. She says that it is not so bad for women as they receive gifts and have men hold doors open for them. Excited, Damien enthusiastically tells her about the patriarchal world over drinks. After having a few too many drinks in his system, Damien tries to make out with Alex but she tells him that she doesn't take advantage of drunk guys and sends him back home in a cab. It is revealed that Alex had recorded her conversation with Damien, which she takes to her boss Annie Meyer the next day. Alex tells her that she wants to show the world that even masculists are dependent on women. She plans to get Damien to fall in love with her so she can eventually break his heart and teach him a lesson. Annie loves the idea and asks to see the writing sample on her desk as soon as possible. As Alex continues to court Damien, he tells Chris that he can no longer work for Alex because he is dating her. This upsets Chris because he is afraid that he won't get his job back after his paternity leave ends. The two get into an argument and Damien brings up the fact that his wife doesn't respect him. Upset, Chris tells Damien to never talk to him. Alex and Damien spend more and more time together and eventually have intercourse. Unbeknownst to Damien, she even records them having it. Alex takes him to her work parties and even introduces him to Annie. During their time together, Alex continues to have intercourse with other men, one of whom vandalizes her home for using him. Meanwhile, blinded by love, Damien irons her shirt and runs errands for her. Chris eventually forgives Damien. When Chris tells him about Lolo's unfaithfulness, Damien comforts him and promises to be by his side no matter what. Meanwhile, Alex always makes it a point to hide her writing samples from Damien which only makes him more curious. He asks to see it, but she changes the topic and asks him to work for her. Damien turns down the offer, saying he's applied to work at a bar because he doesn't want to be dependent on her. He says he wants to be equal to her, which irritates her. One day, a man named Daffodil shows up at Alex's place unannounced while she is away. Daffodil seems upset and forces his way into Alex's bedroom. Worried, Damien texts Alex, who tells him to call the cops on him. Daffodil Spray paints small tits on her bedroom wall and tells Damien that the marbles on her shelf represent her each male conquest. A tearful Daffodil tells him that she made him feel smart and worthy only to make him feel like a fool in the end. Damien is taken aback by the revelations and he confronts Alex about the marbles. He asks her if he is also just another marble for her. Alex refuses to take responsibility and gaslights him instead. An upset Damien then leaves. Damien starts seeing a therapist. Meanwhile, Alex submits her first sample to her publisher, who loves it and tells her she can't wait to read the rest. However, Alex has started to have doubts about the novel as she feels it's cruel. She suggests new novel ideas to Annie but the latter turns them down and orders her to finish the rest of her novel. After a lot of deliberation, Alex decides against writing the novel and tells her decision to Annie. Meanwhile, Chris kicks Lolo out of the house and she crashes at Damien's apartment. Lolo reveals that she cheated on Chris while she was pregnant and her hormones were raging. She regrets cheating on him and asks Damien to convince Chris to take her back. 
Alex makes amends and returns back to Damien's life. He doesn't waste time in proposing marriage to her and to his astonishment, she accepts the proposal. Damien and his father convince Chris to forgive Lolo. Damien also tells his father about Alex. The next day, Damien and Chris join the masculist group, Tit for Tat, in protesting against a French college for only honoring female writers. At the venue, Damien meets Annie, who recognizes him. When Annie smugly asks him if he has nothing better going on in his life, Chris proudly tells her that Damien is actually getting married to Alex. Damien taunts her, saying some women are more open-minded than others. However, Annie snatches the smile and pride out of his face when she tells him that Alex is already married. Stunned by the revelation, Damien rushes to confront Alex. When he finds her door locked, Damien tricks Martel into giving him the keys to her apartment. After gaining entry into her home, Damien goes through her belongings and finds her marriage certificate. Hurt, he trashes her room. Meanwhile, Alex is at her husband's place to pick up her daughter. Before departing, Alex tells him that she has filed for divorce and this time he must sign the papers. Alex then returns home with her daughter and she learns from Martel that Damien had dropped by. When she enters her home, she finds the entire place trashed. Alex notices her writing samples on the floor and realizes that Damien has found out about the novel. A worried Alex looks for Damien everywhere. Meanwhile, Chris gets a call from his friend Erica who tells him that Damien is drunk out of his mind at her bar and some girls are harassing him. Lolo and Chris then proceeded to rush to the bar. Outside their apartment, they meet Alex and tell her about Damien. Alex follows them to the bar, where an old woman is trying to rape a drunk Damien. Lolo fends off the old woman's friends while Alex finds the old woman knocked unconscious on the ground. Worried, she rushes by Damien's side, but he pushes her away. Alex admits her mistake and comes clean about the novel and the recordings. But this makes Damien even more upset because he only found out about the marriage and not the novel and recordings. Feeling cheated, Damien slaps her. Alex tries to explain herself but the two accidentally headbutt each other and knock themselves unconscious. Alex then wakes up in an ambulance being tended to by male medics. She rushes out of the ambulance and notices that she is in a patriarchal world. The streets are filled with raunchy advertisements that objectify women. The movie ends as she notices a feminist march and among its participants is Damien who calls out for her. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.